Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 21st, 2022, occurred on 11.25 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical system to be forming off the coast of Africa over the next several days, and just exactly how will the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season play out? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that we have a couple of things going on. First of all, we have a tropical wave, kind of a dead tropical wave that has now moved off of Africa. It's located kind of in the central part of the MDR at this point. We have a lot of areas of shower and thunderstorm activity over the Yucatan Peninsula and parts of Mexico. And then this tropical wave here that is now emerging off the coast of Africa. This is going to be what we're going to focus on over the next several days. As this wave begins to traverse generally westward, this will have a chance of development as it begins to interact with the warmer sea surface temperatures and the more uh, favorable upper level pattern in this environment. If we look real quickly here over at the East Pacific, we notice that we have tropical storm Celia. Again, Celia was a tropical depression, has now strengthened once again into a tropical storm. This is expected to become a hurricane on Thursday as it generally heads towards the west northwest here. So far, this is not expected to have any significant land concerns over the next couple of days. And in the tropical Atlantic, everything is quiet, at least for the next five days. This is a valid, you know for out the next five days, 120 hours, and nothing is expected there. However, some of the models were very interesting over the, the last couple of days, and that's kind of a good segue into this. So the models over the last several days, and especially last night, uh, this kind of goes to show basically what the forecast models are, are suggesting. So briefly here, basically all of the models from the, the global forecast models here, the GFS, the Euro, and the Canadian, all suggest that whatever is going to come off of Africa, this big wave that's right now emerging off the coast is expected to become a tropical depression based on all of the guidance from the overnight uh, models here. Now, only the GFS does forecast this to become a tropical storm. And if it was to become a tropical storm, the next name would be Bonnie. And uh, really, the only system, the only model that carries this into the Caribbean uh, would be the Zero Z Euro model. So we'll take a look at all of these computer models right now. So looking at the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar vorticity, or the spin in the atmosphere, at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, for context here, we really want to see these darker reds and oranges if we're going to see a nice tropical system forming. Well, we notice over the next couple of days here, based on the GFS, that we notice that there's actually this little itty bitty area of uh, concentrated vorticity down here, this little wave down here. And it doesn't really look that all that impressive on the model until this starts getting near the Caribbean. And on the zero Z forecast, this actually is a very low rider. This is just about at eight, you know, about eight and a half north, uh, you know, there. And that really suggests that this is going to be something that potentially even South America uh, would have to pay close monitoring to. But the GFS does insist on that becoming a tropical cyclone. And it's going to be a very small system. But if we look here at the upper level environment, we notice that there's actually a semi-favorable upper level environment. If a storm were to be this far south, it would definitely be displaced and get sheared from outflow to the north. Um, and there actually is a lot of dry air in this environment as well. You can kind of see any storm that would be in here is going to compete with some very dry, stable air to the north of this that will be trying to blast in on the northern flanks and eastern flanks of the storm. So this is going to have a hard time developing uh, if it were to, but certainly could give us at least a trackable future over the next couple of days. For reference here, this is also the European, the zero Z run of the Euro, and much to its kind of surprise here, we noticed that again, the Euro, although it doesn't develop a system as it approaches the islands, it actually develops a system further out into the Caribbean. Uh, this again, dealing with about 30 knots of trade wind through this area, I'm not so sure that this is going to happen, but it is certainly a possibility. And even on the zero, uh, the 60 GFS, the 060 GFS, uh, this is the morning run uh, from earlier this morning, ran about 2 a.m. Uh, the operational run did not have a storm that formed, but if we look on the ensemble forecasts, 
uh, valid for next Monday, we notice that there is a very decent clustering of areas of low pressure down here. And this could be a sign that we could be having a storm form. So confidence is certainly increasing. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the Hurricane Center mention it, especially given the fact that we have pretty good support here on the uh, ECM uh, ensembles here. We noticed that the European ensembles have a pretty good amount of, you know, clusterings here of, of where storms could be. And I mean, that's a decent amount of members and they actually do increase as you head into the Caribbean. So we'll continue to watch the model trends on this. Again, we could be seeing things that eventually end up developing closer to Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados. So this area certainly needs to be paying attention uh, as we move forward in time. Now looking forward here, we'll take a look here at the sea surface temperature anomaly map. This was updated just uh, actually as of yesterday. We noticed that most of the tropical MDR at this point is well above the long-term average. We're looking here at about half a degree to a degree Celsius above the long-term average, according to, you know, depending which data set you use. And then we have this big warmth out here in the southwestern Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. And even, you know, down here, even though this is showing below average, this is still very warm and in, in the Caribbean. So we're definitely going to be seeing increased potential uh, for tropical cyclones and more intense storms this year. And we're seeing these westerly winds that continue across the tropical Atlantic at this point in the low levels. And these tropical westerlies actually will help to slow down the trade winds and increase warming across this entire region. While at the same time, the easternlies up here in the mid and upper levels combined with these low level westerlies create a background cyclonic vorticity, background cyclonic spin, and it does help to lower the pressures in this region, and it actually helps to generate more tropical cyclones uh, because it increases background favorability for spin, and you need spin to get areas of low pressure. So this is definitely one of the things that we have to pay attention to. All of this background spin with these low-level westernlies, that's going to help to create additional storms as we head further into the season here. And just kind of like we've been talking about over the last several days, this big ridge of high pressure will be setting up across the North Atlantic this year. Again, the exact placement is a little iffy right now. And while the placement does matter, the overall favorability will be for storms to generally head toward more westernly this year, uh, you know, and that could certainly provide for some potential nasty impacts to, you know, to the islands, the Caribbean, the Gulf, etc. Uh, you know, and I wouldn't, you know, rule out the fact that, you know, the United States East Coast has not had a major threat of, uh, you know, over the last couple of years. And I, I think we might see that change this year. So we'll have to watch this very closely. Again, nothing, you know, set in stone at the point. Again, we could be seeing another tropical cyclone, maybe a tropical storm that ends up forming out here again over the next couple of days. So we'll have to really monitor that very closely. Again, I'll be continuing to monitor that. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.